Hello everybody and welcome to a Sports Gazette Live Newsday special. I'm Charlie, I write a lot about football and I'm blessed with the presence of Nathan here, the football editor. Nathan, you're on your big day out at the St Mary's campus. How are you doing today, mate? Yeah, good. We've got a few people in, but um, campus looks a little bit like a ghost town. But um, I suppose that's not the worst thing in the world. No, sounds like a lovely day. It's going to get even better because we're about to discuss we're about to do a whole lot of things in a very short space of time. So we're going to round up um, some of the Europa League and the Champions League action that's been going on in the last week. And of course, just this morning and into the afternoon, we've had the Champions League quarterfinal draw, swiftly followed by the Europa League draw. So basically, we're just going to take you through all of that. Um, so yeah, it's going to be lovely stuff, isn't it, Nathan? It is, absolutely. I'm going to, I'm going to kick things off by just rounding off what's been happening in the Champions League over the last couple of weeks. I'm sure a lot of people will already know, but just to take you through so that we're up to speed before we dive into the draw. So obviously, last week's games, Dortmund managed to see off Sevilla. That was basically Erling Braut Haaland on his own, just piling in the goals. Porto saw off Juve in an absolute thriller. I hope everyone had the luxury of watching that game. PSG saw off Barcelona to advance and Liverpool quite shockingly, in my opinion, pretty much demolished uh, RB Leipzig to go through. As we move into this week, Madrid saw off Atalanta 4-1 on aggregate. Atalanta, a tiny club really in Italy, so it was a valiant effort for them to even get this far in the competition. But Madrid did the business. City saw off Mönchengladbach 2-0 to win 4-0 on aggregate. Gladbach pretty much suffering in the Bundesliga at the moment. They're down towards mid-table, so... City was just a class apart in that game. They just out-muscled them in general. Um, so City went through there. Bayern just completely out-muscled Lazio. 6-2 on aggregate. 2-1 on the night. Lewandowski again got a goal. His 39th goal of the season, which is just stupendous numbers at this moment in time. He's probably going to break 50 maybe come the end of the season. So Bayern are through. They're one of the main contenders for the overall trophy. And finally, perhaps the shocking result of the round, apart from the Porto game. Chelsea beat Atletico 3-0 on aggregate. 2-0 on the night. Atletico top of La Liga at the moment. Um, so, yeah, quite a shocking result. And I saw this tweet, Nathan, just to throw it back to you here. I saw this tweet, which is currently got by some mathematical wizardry. It's got Chelsea as third favourites for the Champions League trophy behind City and Bayern Munich. And I don't know what you think about that. I, I'm struggling to argue with it at the moment, but what, what's your take on that stuff? I, I can't see how anyone can back that up, to be honest. Um, I think considering the draw at the moment, you'd, you'd argue that Chelsea are on the easier side of things. Um, they've got to play Porto and then they'll play the winners of uh, the Liverpool game. Um, but realistically, I, I think if you're looking at Bayern, you're looking at people like PSG as well, I, I can't see how you'd say Chelsea would be, be third choice for the, for the for the Champions League? I, don't, I think, personally, I think Tuchel's come in and he's made him look so solid. He's not lost a single game since he's come in. So, if you're going on momentum alone, I think you've got to give Chelsea a decent enough chance. Obviously, Atletico were one of the better teams left in this competition and they just saw them off. Um, but yeah, slightly surprising, really. I knew Chelsea were on form, but when you see it like that, Chelsea third favourites to lift the Champions League, it does kind of hit home. A little bit, but Nathan, why don't you why don't you take us through what's been going on in the Europa League in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, Europa League's been a little bit of a whirlwind. So uh, you know, Arsenal, despite losing to Olympiacos in the second leg, uh, they go through, beating them three two on aggregate. That's a, a good result for Arteta and, and his men. Dynamo Zagreb, that this is the story of the Europa League, it, uh, knocked out Tottenham Hotspur after they led uh, two 0 in the first leg, threw absolutely everything away lost 3-0 uh, away to, to Zagreb. And uh, a lot of people calling for Mourinho's head. A lot of people saying that they feel sorry for people like Harry Kane, who, who have to you know, in, endure playing in a team that don't really look like they can, uh, I don't know, hold their bottle despite Mourinho you know, playing uh, what, what seems to be quite defensive tactics. And you'd think they could hold a league. Um, uh, Mould beat Granada, that, goes to, that was 2-1, um, but Granada go through, 3-2 overall. Uh, Roma absolutely smashed Shakhtar Donetsk, 5-1 on aggregate. United scraped a win, Pogba scored a goal in that game against AC Milan. 
Um, they needed that goal to win because Milan um, had, a, had the away goal that was going to go to penalties if, if they didn't score. Um, Rangers, in what was the other big story of the Europa League, uh, have gone out to Slavia Prague, but there was a uh, red card, all sorts, of, uh, all sorts of antics going on in that game. Um, there was obviously the, uh, the incident of racism as well, which Rangers have just put a statement out about. Um, Villarreal beat uh, Dynamo Kiev 4-0 and Ajax go through against Young Boys 5-0 on aggregate. Yeah, crazy stuff, really. Crazy stuff. I think there's a few talking points, but obviously the Rangers game had a bit of everything. Stuff that you want, stuff that you really don't want to see. Um, I think also the red card tackle, he just booted the keeper with his studs right in the forehead. Like split I've not seen forehead. anything like that before. That, that was absolutely bizarre. But I think the one with most of the talking points is actually the Zagreb-Tottenham game, which pretty much had everything. So you didn't... First of all, first of all, the most incredible storyline in this game, Zoran Mamic, the Zagreb manager, just got put in prison for five years a few days ago. That happened this week. Um, and then, obviously, further on from that, a guy called Orsic, his first name eludes me at the moment, He's one of those guys whose name he's popped up here and there, but I think he's firmly on the scene after last night. Probably one of the best hat-tricks I've seen in a very long time, Nathan. Three incredible goals. I don't know if you saw it. Definitely three incredible goals. I mean, you, you didn't really see it coming, but with, with the manager, I mean, getting put in jail in the last week, you, you can see how these players are going to want to play their heart out and just put everything on the pitch and do it for their manager, really. There was a lot of, uh, a lot of funny chat going around about how he was... Uh, leading all the tactics from jail. He was using his one phone call to make his half-time substitutions or whatever. But um, yeah, crazy scenes in that game. So I've seen all sorts going around on social media, um, specifically uh, this tweet where, where a fan saying he's watched Spurs for the last 20 years and he is not going to watch another game until Mourinho is not the manager anymore. Do you, do you think that's an overreaction, Charlie? Or, or do you think he's within, within reason? I think all will become clear, Nathan, when the League Cup final happens, right? Tottenham are desperate for any silverware. Um, and if they do win that, I think the odds are kind of against them. They're playing City in the League Cup final. If they do win that, all this negative energy surrounding Mourinho could just disappear because Spurs have been without a trophy for decades and decades. Actually, that's not true, is it? They won the League Cup at like about 10, 20 years ago. Yeah. They need more yeah. silverware. That is the overarching point here. They need more silverware. And Mourinho is the guy to bring that in. So he's hanging by a thread. And that thread specifically is the League Cup final. If he loses that, he's gone. He can have no complaints whatsoever. Um, yeah, that's my view on it, Nathan. I, I definitely think it will be a turning point for him. So some may argue that he, he's not the man to bring the trophy home. I mean, he won... Well, he won one trophy with United while he was there, but then in the past few seasons, I mean, he's been booted from his last three jobs for not really, not really cutting it. So we'll see, won't we? We'll see. He's looking. His tactics are looking a bit outdated, um, but yeah, like I said, like we both said, hanging by a thread. We'll see what happens. As we now progress onto the draw, the big news of the morning: the Champions League draw, the Europa League draw. We're going to start with the big competition that happens on Tuesday and Wednesday. We're going to leave Thursday ball until a little bit later on. Mm -hmm. um, so the first, the first game, I don't know, I'll just rattle through the games first. First fixture, we got Man City versus Dortmund. Then we got Porto, Chelsea, Bayern, PSG, Madrid, Liverpool. Man City versus Dortmund, Nathan. You know, probably one of the easier draws that City could have got, apart from one ginormous Norwegian elephant in the room, which is Erling Braut Haaland. I guess it just becomes a, it becomes an issue of whether City can hold him off. I don't know. What do you think? Do you, do you think City should be feeling confident going into this tie? I, I think City will be feeling confident. De defensively, Dortmund have not looked like they can necessarily hold the league, uh, hold the lead. And to be honest, I think it will come down to Haaland versus the Stones and Diaz. I mean, we've got an absolutely impregnable defence in Stones and Diaz. I think they've conceded one goal in the Champions League all season. But between the two of them, they've got a better goal difference than a lot of the, the teams in the Champions League because they've scored as well. But Haaland's just absolutely on fire. You, you couldn't write off this Dortmund team because, I mean, you, you can't rule out the possibility that he's going to go and score three 
maybe even four goals. Who knows? Yeah, he's a terrifying prospect. And if I just bring up this tweet as well, um, another little storyline in this game is Jadon Sancho, who City let go without making a proper senior appearance, a senior appearance for the club. Obviously, he hit the ground running a couple of years ago when he moved to Dortmund. He's now going to come back. He'll be very keen to make an impression. Um, and yeah, I think the prospect of him and Erling Braut Haaland on the counter-attack. City commit a lot of bodies forward when they attack, so the counter-attack is going to be a real prominent feature of that game for Dortmund. Um, that's going to be terrifying. We'll see what happens. On to the next game. We've got Porto versus Chelsea. Chelsea must be pinching themselves. The last day of the Champions League, they've drawn by far the easiest team left in the draw. Porto put up a really good display against, against Juve, but I feel like they just played the game of their life there. Um, what do you think, Nathan? I think, I think chances are Chelsea should be out-muscling Porto here and just advancing straight into the semi-finals. Yeah, I think they should too. I mean, it is a little bit of a gimme game, um, or at least you'd think anyway. Um, Porto did just play out of their skins in, in that Juve game as well. But um, I don't know. Teams, teams go on runs and they do crazy things game after game some years, you know. So Porto might come into it and they might absolutely blow Chelsea away. But um, I definitely think it would be... I definitely think it would be a good opportunity for uh, people like Werner to get on the score sheet because he's been lacking a little bit of confidence in recent games. But that, that two-call defence just looks, looks so solid. I can't see Porto getting through it. It does. It looks ridiculously solid. And, of course, Tuchel's been there before. Last year, he took PSG all the way to the final. He won't be phased by this occasion. His team's got all the momentum. So, I really fancy Chelsea. Um, really fancy Chelsea to advance in that tie. We move on to the third tie of the Champions League quarters. That is my pick of the entire European competition that we've got coming up. That is Bayern versus Paris Saint-Germain. You know, two absolute heavyweights here. Um, you've got Lewandowski, who's the top scorer in Europe, arguably the best player in the world right now. And you've got Neymar and Mbappe on the other team, arguably in Mbappe, you've got the most exciting young player in the world. Bayern are quite weak at the back. They have been this season, so it could be a free-flowing game. So, I don't know. A lot of things could happen here, Nathan. Tons of different things could happen. Um, I think there is a marginal favourite, though. Who do you think that is in your eyes? In my eyes, it's Bayern. I mean, they've looked, they've looked a little shaky at the back, but I, I, I think they're, they're pretty solid and they've got great players. I mean, the, the lineup star-studded as ever. Uh, PSG have been in good form and of course they've got Mbappe and Neymar and you, you can't rule that out. But um, for me, I think Bayern will take it purely on the fact that they're just more experienced at this level of the competition. Yeah, I think so. I think so too. I think they have been a bit vulnerable at the back. Teams can get at them. Uh, and when you've got PSG, the kind of talent that they've got, I'm sure they'll be able to nick a goal or two. But People forget PSG aren't even top of the French League at this point in the season. They're, I think they're three or four points behind Lille at this moment in time. So they're not the juggernaut they were last season. They did destroy Barca, which is kind of, you know, looming large in a lot of people's minds. But I think Bayern are definitely the favourites going into this, but it should be a great game. And finally, your boys, Nathan, we've got Madrid, Real Madrid, taking on Liverpool in the fourth and final quarterfinal. This is a tough one to call. These are two European legends, right? Two teams with probably the best European pedigree you'll find anywhere. Um, but they're kind of, I don't want to call them sleeping giants, but they're not at their peak at the moment. That's why I think this one's a difficult one to call. But I think you should take the lead on this one. It's your boys. Um, what kind of chance do you think they've got to, to overcome Madrid here? It, it, it's an extremely tough one to call. I think these two teams are... I don't know, probably the, one of the closest match pairings that we've got. And we've got all sorts of storylines that are running through this one. So we've got, we've got the return of, uh, or sorry, we've got a repeat of Salah versus Ramos. Obviously, the last time uh, Liverpool faced Real Madrid was in the Champions League final. Um, I should mention, actually, in this, in this semi-final, we've got a repeat of uh, two of the three last finals. Um, the only, uh, only team not to make an appearance is, of course, Spurs, who's just been dumped out of the Europa League. But um, I think this one's such a close one to call. I think uh, Karim Benzema scored more goals against Liverpool in Europe than any other player in history. So that's a little bit of a worry for, for Liverpool fans. But for me, I think over two legs we can do it. Um, we, we've not looked at our best at all, but I think we, we always turn up for the big games. And this is definitely a big game. 
It's a huge game. It's a huge game. And personally, I'm going to give it to Madrid. I think Madrid will edge it. That's got nothing to do with bias. I'm trying to look at it as objectively as possible. But, you know, my friend messaged me there. He said, Benzema versus Nat Phillips. And that just that just decided it for me. I thought, you know what, fair enough. <laughs> so I think I'll give it to Madrid. So, yeah, and then just quickly, if they get to the semi-final, it'll be City or Dortmund against Bayern or PSG. So the winner of the City-Dortmund game has got a very tough assignment in the semis. And then Porto-Chelsea against Madrid or Liverpool. That is probably objectively the weaker side of the draw. Um, so, yeah, I think the English teams will fancy themselves there. Chelsea or Liverpool have got a decent chance of going all the way to the final. That's the state of play in the Champions League. Nathan, you can tell us all about the Europa League draw and we'll chat a little bit about that. So, yeah, this is a big one too. We've got the Europa League quarter-final draw. Many people were hoping for a, potentially an English match-up here because both Arsenal and uh, Manchester United are still in it. But the draw goes as follows. Uh, Granada will face Manchester United. Arsenal have been drawn against Slavia Prague. Ajax have been matched up against Roma, which looks probably the most evenly matched and potentially one of the tastiest games in there. And then Dynamo Zagreb will face the Villarreal. So the English sides will fancy themselves here because I think, I think United can do it over Granada over two legs. And Arsenal with Slavia Prague, that, that seems like a result they should be able to get despite their lack of uh, attacking potency in the last few games. Yeah, I think... The English sides will be very happy here. I won't, I won't go into specifics because I, I see we're going to go through each game, but I think Arsenal have probably got the easier side of the draw. United have got the easiest immediate tie, but when they get, when slash if they get to the semis, then it gets a bit tougher for them. But, you know, I think both English sides here, United and Arsenal, will be very happy about what's happened this morning. Um, yeah, obviously, moving forward to the Europa League semi-final draw, it looks a little bit harder for Manchester United if they go through. So the winners of the Granada versus Man U game will play the winners of uh, Ajax Roma. And then the winners of Dynamo Zagreb versus Villarreal will play the winners of Arsenal Slavia Prague. So all round as an Arsenal fan, you'd probably be quite confident going through, um, going, going through to the semis and then on to the final here. Um, do, you, do you think they can do it? Definitely, yeah, definitely. I think a year ago, Slavia were kind of a different team. Obviously, they've been made a little bit famous by the likes of Suchek and Kufal, who have both, both come to the Premier League and they're basically smashing it with West Ham. They haven't got those players anymore. They got past Rangers in probably fortunate circumstances. Obviously, Rangers down to 10 men. Um, Slavia, they're basically the standard of team. You know, if Arsenal were playing Slavia in the group stage, you would expect them to steamroll them. So I don't think people should get blinded by the fact it's the quarters. I think Arsenal are a much, much better team. They need to be way more clinical than they were against Olympiacos. Made tons of chances, didn't finish them off. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, I don't think this is too much of a debate. I think Arsenal should quite easily see this one through. Who's, uh, who's your money on overall then to, to take that trophy home? Um, do you know what? I think whoever wins Ajax Roma has got a, a spectacular chance because Ajax are a great team. Roma have been there or thereabouts in a very competitive Serie A this season. So, you know, that's quite an achievement to even just be in the conversation there. Um, so I think whoever wins that game, and I would just edge it towards Roma, has got a very good chance of winning the trophy. So other than that, I'd say United are probably the second strongest team in the draw. Um, but Arsenal are in the, in the easiest side of the draw. So, you know, if I was to put my life on it, I would say Manchester United through gritted teeth. I would say United. Who have you got? I would have gone the same as much as I hate to say it. Uh, uh, I think, yeah, United probably will edge it. I think if they keep all their good players fit, if they've got the likes of Bruno Fernandes, if they've got Pogba, they've got Rashford firing on all cylinders, then I think there's no way that that Roma team's going to stand a chance. Ajax, they... they could potentially stand a chance, but they're not the Ajax that we've seen in recent years. They've been stripped down. A lot of their good players have been shipped out to other clubs. So I, I would probably write them off in that draw. OK, that's going to conclude our discussion today about what's been happening in the Champions League, what's been happening in the Europa League and what's to come in both competitions. I think hopefully we've, we've enlightened you all on, you know, the storylines, the main events that are coming up in these matches. Um, I, for one, am absolutely buzzing to see these get underway. The Champions League, the quarterfinals there get underway on the 6th and 7th of April. Everyone be on the lookout for that. I'm sure the Sports Gazette is going to be pumping out content related to 
those games. Same with the Europa League, although obviously Thursday ball can never quite compete um, with the Tuesday and Wednesday boys like Nathan and myself. It's been a pleasure, Nathan. Thanks for talking to me. Um, and I will see you all, you know, whenever we do a new video.